So Dennis Hutchins, you you tell us about Dennis Hutchins being um prosecuted and whatnot. Yeah, Dennis um De- Dennis ended up going to his grave without being able to prove himself innocent. And I know that was something that he was passionate about doing. Um and I remember, you know, the first time I seen him at court and I thought, this is an elderly man. This is the kind of man you get up for on the bus when uh, when there's no seats this is you know a man who I see every every remembrance uh day every remembrance service I see old men just like Dennis um walking with pride with their puppies and laying wreaths for their friends who have fallen um and it you know it's heartbreaking to think that this is still ongoing um when the IRA have been given letters acquitting them of all wrongdoing. Uh, we have actually an MLA, Jerry Kelly, who has, they're called on the run letters because these people were on the run from the British government. Um, and they, need, I think it was information they needed off them and they gave them these letters, which basically meant that they, if they, unless it was new um, intelligence that, that they were being brought to court on, they don't even have to go to court to, to be heard if they are accused of crimes that they have done. Now, Jerry Kelly, he he was um, a bomber who was in prison and escaped. And he went to Holland and he was extradited from Holland um, to the UK and given this on the run letter. And he's now our MLA in Northern Ireland. And he's on he's on chat shows. He's on the BBC quite a lot. Um, and the reality is, his victims, his, he, he shot a prison officer in the head. That man's wife has to look at her television and see how well her husband's murder is, is getting on in life, while she probably hasn't moved on from the day her husband was shot dead. Um, and, and it just shows such a contrast that they are taking our veterans to, to court um, over what may be illegal killings, but they know that the, the that these IRA members murdered people out of cold blood, and they are allowing them to get away with it. Um, and if that's the price of peace, I would prefer that the British government just dealt with the IRA as they should have done in the seventies. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for um giving us a, a bit of backfill on that because I, you know, I, I know my my father's been on a few uh, veteran marches here for him before you know he passed away and the court cases were happening. Um, and I'd seen you, you, you know, delivered a speech at the memorial in Northern Ireland. So yeah, I just wanted to touch that with with you. Um, right. So a bit more controversial, Jolene. So what can we talk about and what can't we talk about? <laughs> so. You're um as I said in the beginning, you're in hot water. Um and yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here. Help us out. So um what can you talk about? What can't you talk about? So we we'll we'll, we'll skip quickly past this, okay? What we will say is I am being taken on a civil case um for basically saying how disgusted I am the drag queen story time is allowed to happen with drag queens who are doing sexualized shows the rest of the week and then one day a week they're going to different venues meaning that they don't need fetish and they are they are reading to children and they are having access to children and I like most parents wouldn't be wasn't happy with this and I'm now being taken on civil action um that civil action I I ended up breaching the court conditions um for the civil action and I am now I I was threatened with prison um so twice I was at court and I went to court having to prepare my two children one's seven and one's nine and I had to prepare them that I could go to prison um the judge there gave me a conditional discharge, but um, the the uh, <laughs> the drag queen who has taken the civil action isn't happy with that, so he has appealed that decision. So I once again am facing prison um, over a breach of a court court conditions for three days. 
and I am going to have, I have to prepare my children again, the mummy might not come back for a few weeks. Right. Now, as I said, we'll tread carefully, just say what you can and can't say, obviously, because of the, the case and that. Um, before we started recording, we had a quick chat um and you explained to me something that he did are you able to talk about that because that's not part of this case in particular are you able to talk about that or not oh that was a different drag queen uh, oh that's right, a different okay. well, very popular you are aren't you <laughs> <laughs> well what actually got me looking at drag queen story time i i, I had heard I, I would be lying if i said i had never heard of drag queen story time uh, I didn't think it was a popular thing. I didn't think that it was ongoing. I had heard it was happening, especially in the US. Um, but what actually got me looking into Drag Queen Storytime was I was at a Queen's Jubilee event um, on the Shanker Road, which is a predominantly loyalist, conservative um, part of Northern Ireland. Well, it used to be anyway. And my little girl was walking beside me and there was a stage just in front of us and she, she started laughing and she said, oh, mommy, there's someone's bum. And I looked up and it was a backside and a thong. And I thought to myself, what's going on there? So I went up to this stage with this drag queen in a thong surrounded by children um, dancing to, to Disney music. And I thought, wow, I can't believe this is actually happening in my local area. And I snapped the, the drag queen and I got the children in the car and left straight away. Um, three days later, I obviously came home, put that picture on, on social media, um, said how disgusting it was. And three days later, I had the police at the door and they said, can you remove the picture? There's nothing wrong with the post. However, we, we want you to remove the picture. And I said, no, this is a street performer. Why would I remove the picture? I'm not doing anything illegal. And they said, well, in that case, you're giving us no choice but to caution you. And they cautioned me. And I was just, I was horrified by this. Um, I have no criminal record. I've never been questioned by the police. And suddenly these policemen are at my door cautioning me for having a picture of a, a street performer. Um, I was kind of like, do you know what? Take me to court. I want to go to court with this. You know, there is no way that I'm accepting this. Um, there is no further action on the caution. However, before I knew that, a few days later, a video came through to me. And David, I believe you're going to play that video. Yeah, we'll stick it on now. Have a look at this. Yeah. And so, as you can see, this drag queen has an effigy of me and he's practically raping it on stage and I was disgusted. I was disgusted that the police had cautioned me for having a photo of him but he was able to hand my photo out in this, in this presumably gay bar. I was absolutely livid so I phoned the police and the police contacted me six days after I had initially reported it to tell me that the investigating officer was going on holiday for two weeks and I should hear from them in two weeks time. And I said, uh, well, what, is this because I'm not part of the LGBT community? Mm. That it takes this long. Why was it three days for the police to come out to me? Uh, and you're only phoning me six days after I've reported this crime to tell me that it's going to be another two weeks. And he... The police officer basically, he, he kind of stuttered and stumbled and he said, right, I'll get an officer. And that was his attitude. He was cheeky about it. I'll get an officer to come in and take your statement from you. So I went to the police station. The, the officer who was taking my statement knew nothing of what I had given the police already. He said, I said, look, I, I can email you the video. And he said, ah, oh, it's too complicated to email the video. It has to go through all our filters. So I will just take a video off your phone on my body cam. And he literally held the body cam up to my phone to, to take this video. I wasn't asked any questions. It was it was basically my side of the story and that was it. So I got, so the police officer, the investigating officer phoned me two weeks after 
when he came back from his holidays, he said, I've had a look at this, you know, it, it definitely doesn't seem right. I'm going to go out and speak to him. Um, and this may end up in court. And I says, that's fine. I'm happy to have my day in court. Please, you know, just go out and speak to him. You know, this can't be happening. This can't be allowed to happen. And I didn't hear anything until the end of September. That was early July. Um, end of June. And I didn't hear anything until the end of September when the investigating officer told, phoned me and told me that there would be no further action. And when I asked why, he said, oh, well, you were unwilling to tell us who sent you the video. I says, I wasn't unwilling to tell you who sent the video. That's you irrelevant who sent the video, video, isn't it? Yeah. He didn't mean for me to see the video, so therefore he's not a fault. It was the person, the, the issue would be with um, whoever recorded the video. He tried to tell me this. Uh, I was just disgusted. At that point, I, I have still, my solicitor um, is still under instruction to take action against the police because, David, I want to make this very, very clear. I believe that that man has every right to offend me, but I also have every right to offend him. And this you know, treating me differently from him because he has a different sexual or orientation to me is just disgusting. Um, he also goes in this in the video you hear him. It's not really audible, but he goes on a rant about Christians. If I was to stand on a stage well, and 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 say the same thing about Islam or about Hinduism or or, or Judaism, I would be in jail however this man just gets away with it and that's that's the reality of the police today and that's reality of the justice system today we are for we are being forced um to just accept the unacceptable yeah and i think uh, you know it's as we were saying earlier it's going it's going too far left now it's going to, and they're um you know, well, free speech is the cornerstone of democracy. And I don't know if you've seen this today, Jolene, but on um on Twitter, just to move the topic now, just on Twitter, the, the latest now, um, they're saying you can't use the term globalist. But not so bankrupt the economy. Also, may nearly, I ask you, nearly, how much, nearly, Jerry, nearly, Jerry, nearly, as we carry on, through, this is very important, Jerry, as we carry on this conversation, please don't use the phrase globalist again, because many of my Jewish listeners will find that incredibly offensive, um, because it has also been used at times as uh, a racist put down to the Jewish community. So so carry on, Jerry. Uh, answer on, my, if you wouldn't mind that's answering. That's not true. That's not true. It's madness what's going on with you know, within the UK, it's absolutely crazy. So, um, but obviously, it's not just here. It's you know, this is this is globalism. Um, unfortunately, I think it's here to stay. And um, what do you think we need to do to tackle this? Because obviously, this is across the board. It's you know, it's in in the US, it's in, you know, in Australia, New Zealand, and or everywhere. So, um, what do you think we have to do as people to to, to fight back? I mean, you're doing a sounds like you're doing a a good job at the moment. But what would you say to people out there that had enough of this? Yeah, but we, we are, you know, I have so much respect for anyone who's willing to put their head above the parapet because I know the shots that get fired at you. However, I think the only way to defeat this is politically. I don't think we have the strength to do anything other than defeat this politically because the reality is we are the silent majority. And just because the left are, are loud, they are getting away with this. And what I think we need to do is we need to to we need to have a political party with a good leader. Uh, there is no point in having multiple political parties with the same policies, with identical mandates, with identical manifestos, simply um, turn lumps out of each other and bitching about each other. Don't get me wrong, there are many on the left that I don't like for good reason. Uh, there's many that I don't like just because I don't like them. Um, but the reality <laughs> is, I won't come out and say who those people are because mm. we have we have to start. We have to, and we have to stop this bitch. I was recently on um, on a show, and I, I I couldn't believe the backlash that I had got off being on the the, the show. Um, and 
I, I thought to myself, how are we ever going to move forward if we are constantly taking lumps out of people who are active and are willing to put their head above the parapet? Because that's exactly mm. the people we need. We need the people who aren't afraid to put their name forward because the, mm. the, what's going to happen is if... You know, you know, and I know you keep are making effort now to try and get some some unity around UKIP. Um, I don't know if that's the best idea, but if it's going to work, great. Um, but I know that they're they're UKIP are trying to get a united party, um, up and running, and I would absolutely love to see it. However, we cannot exclude good people who are, who would be willing to to hand out leaflets who would be willing to highlight um, what, what other activists are doing, what other candidates are doing, because re the reality is at the next general election, someone needs to oppose the unconservative conservatives and real conservatives mm. need to come in uh, and demand that, our, that a conservative party is elected because they're conservative in name only, they're unionist in name only, they they are an absolute disgrace to the name conservative and unionism. Um, but if you look at them on paper, that is why people are, are voting for them because they want a conservative and unionist party in Westminster, but unfortunately we aren't getting that. Yeah, you spot on there. I think like, like you you touched on earlier, saying you know we don't really have like a, a right wing uh, political figure or a leader. I mean, other than Nigel Farage, you know, who has the charisma as as, as a leader. Um, you know, Richard Tice, you know, um, you know, he's not really you know my cup of tea. I've met him on a couple of occasions down at Westminster. Um, UKIP, oh, you know, I was with UKIP for a while. I ducked out from there. Um, too much in-house fighting, um, cloak and dagger stuff going on. But I suppose you get that in, in every political party. Um, so yeah, I joined joined the Heritage Party because they're, they're socially conservative. Um, but I do agree with you, and I think we do need some sort of coalition. But I think maybe some sort of an agreement like they do in Italy. Um, you know, there's lots of small parties that you know join together. Um, a friend of mine, Mike Costello. Um, he's run an organisation at the minute trying to get parties to um to sort of work together. So you just stand in one one constituent. So lo local elections, they'll stand in each constituents, um, different parties. So they, you know, you're not splitting the vote. Um, I think we need to see that on a larger scale. Um, I, I yeah, you're if, right there. Otherwise, we don't stand a chance, do we? I think if the public. Could, could just see a little bit of unity. I think they would absolutely love it. And I think that they would vote in their droves because the reality is, and I, I'm speaking from a Northern Ireland perspective here, is that most good right-minded, I, I don't like saying right-wing because, the, you know, the, the reality is I'm, I'm not right-wing, I'm just right. Um, and the those people who can see the insanity in what is going on um, can see what the globalists are doing, can see um, that we are no longer in charge of our own nation and it's being run by the World Economic Forum um, and that's quite obvious now. It, it, it's, it's quite obvious, however, the people who are angriest are the people who will not go out and put their vote in the ballot box uh, because they are angry at the politicians. And we need to give them, number one, an alternative. Number two, an alternative that they know they're going to vote for because what we see is that if someone knows that there is a good amount of votes in an area, there's two or three similar parties standing um, in the same place and the votes are being split. It happened to me at the council election and even with the, with the onslaught that I have got with the council election, um, I still believe if one of the, the, the candidates hadn't have stood, I may have retained my seat. But there's so much ugliness, there's so much infighting and anger and, and I think it comes from frustration of what we've had mm. to go through. Um, and I, I think what we need to do is we need to get people united. And as you say, if it's not going to be a, one party, just come to an agreement that we're not going to stand two constituents in the same 
uh, like two candidates in the same constituency. Um, I think that the, the whole thing's very easily solved if if the will's there. And I think the will is there now, but I think it should have been done a long time ago. And, you know, you're spot on there. And I think the problem is, like you just say, there, you know, the, the left are, are very organised. You've got to hand it to them. You know, um, you know, they've infiltrated every institution you can think of, um, which has got us where we are today. Um, you know, and they, and they, and they're united. Um, you know, if you think of all the left wing parties, you've got you know the Conservative Party, left wing Labour Party, far left, extreme far left, you got Liberal Democrats, you have got the Greens. I want to take us back to the Stone Age, but when it comes back to to voting, um, you know, they're they're all together. Um, especially here here in the UK. Um, I don't see that with us. You know, we're very, very divided. Um, too many people, you know, want to be king. There's not enough... Um, I think it's too much ego, to be honest with you. I don't know if you've seen... Have you, I don't know if you've ever been to any of the protests and, and stuff in London. Um, we have speeches from, you know, different... These are political parties or, you know, groups or whatnot. Um, I had a few of them messaging me when I had a, when I had a Facebook group. And um, just some of the messages that were coming through from them and the way they were speaking to me, not knowing it was me, obviously, the group was called the Brexiteers. Um, but I used to think to myself, no good, no good. I couldn't, I couldn't just from a message asking me to share a video or something, the way they they, they were just abrupt and rude. You couldn't, you couldn't work with them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I, I say to those people, you know, we, we, I could probably name if I have offhand who I would just say, Go away and leave us to save our country because you're more of a hindrance. And if you genuinely care about the country, which I don't think these people genuinely care about the country, if they genuinely care about the country, then stand aside. Well, that's exactly it. Um, well, it comes out the money, yeah. The, the money that is um, is going through the some movements who do not deserve it is ridiculous. And, you know, and... I fear for where that money's coming from because the reality is we're not getting it from the government. We're not getting it from bigwigs. We're getting it from elderly people. We're getting it from hardworking people. We are getting it from people who have worked all their lives, who are paying their taxes on top of, of get, giving donations to, to parties who just do not deserve it. And at the minute, there's a scandal where uh, one of the parties is putting out that uh, the, he's looking money because he's being sued by one person and the person who sued him has come out and said oh no he's not being pursued by them he's being sued by me and he didn't want to tell you that because they are both on the same side i don't say that lightly because i don't believe for one <laughs> anyone who is willing to lie to the patriots that are supporting them is in mm. any way um is, is in any way on the same side as i am yeah, we just need that, you know, you know. well, we'll see how things go, but hopefully we, we can come to some sort of agreement with parties and whatnot, you know, and, and work how they do in Italy. Um, otherwise, we're, we're pretty much stuffed here. Um, right, so just before we go, um, Geraldine, what's what's next for yourself? Can you see yourself joining another political party? Are you going to stand as a, as a, a independent candidate or you know, what, what's next for yourself? David, I'm, I'm stuck in limbo because I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to stand. However, I would like to stand in the next uh, council elections um, if I'm given the opportunity. I'm waiting on um, an investigation going on by the local government commissioner. Um, so they could ban me from standing completely, um, which I, I'm pretty much expecting them to, to do that, um, at least for this election. Um, but they won't, they won't stop me forever. Um, and I obviously have this court case going on and I'm busting to tell everyone exactly what has gone on in this court case and I have to keep my mouth shut. It's really hard um, because I I have so such amazing people out there who support me and have supported me from from all of the stuff with the council and you know the same faces are still popping up today saying you know giving me the the support that i need um but for now i'm asking people please keep me in your prayers i am i am in hot water um i'm happy for it to be me in hot water instead of someone else 
um, someone who's maybe not able to take the pressure that it has involved because I have had people come to my door to, to attack me for being homophobic, which I have, I, I'm not homophobic. Uh, I have had, I have had lies told about me. Um, I've had lies told about me in court. Um, and it takes someone quite strong and with a good support network. Um, I'm not saying that I'm I'm strong in any way. I just have an amazing family who have stood by me through thick and thin. Um, and as soon as I can talk about it, I will be um, letting everyone know exactly what has gone down because what what our justice system um, has allowed to happen and we'll see. I'm hoping that it does rectify itself and I won't lose all, all, all hope in our justice system. However, what it has allowed to happen um, is absolutely disgraceful and I hope that it never happens to anyone else because the reality is we are losing every freedom we have. And if these parties don't unite and don't come to a decision, we are going to lose this nation. And my forefathers fought and died to keep our freedom, and I'll do the same thing. Spot on there, Jolene. Can't argue with that. Well, best of luck in your future endeavours, and uh, thanks a lot for taking the time for, for joining us. I'll, um, Thank you. I'll send you a link um, once we've got it all uploaded and whatnot. Um, yeah, thanks again. Thanks again for your time, and I'll um, catch up with you soon. Thanks, David. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.